Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Locrine and we've made it to the final scene. We're in Act 5, Scene 5. But don't get too excited because there are a lot of monologues in this particular scene, so we're still going to be working on this play for a bit. But before we get to the ghost of Corinius today, we need to talk about Act 5, Scene 4, because there are no monologues in that scene. And in Act 5, Scene 3, remember we saw Gwendolyn, who was first very sad that she has been spurned, but then Thrasymachus is like, Locrine isn't playing by the law, and Dad always said you have to play by the law. So they decide that, yes, they need to go and wage a war, and Locrine has to die. And even Gwendolyn's son is like, yeah, let's kill Dad. So they get their troops ready to do that. Act 5, Scene 4 is a really short scene with no monologues in it between Locrine and Asaracus and Estrild, like Locrine's side. And he's like, really? The Cornish people are putting together an army and they're going to come and fight me? And Asaracus is like, yeah. And Locrine's like, oh my god, I can't believe Gwendolyn is being so silly and so stupid about this whole thing. Oh well, okay, I guess we should go and fight, fight this war, fight them off. And that's basically Act 5, Scene 4. It's really short. Act 5, Scene 5 starts out, we're sort of outside the Cornish camp now, but before we get into that, the ghost of Corinius comes out by himself with thunder and lightning, and he says, Behold, the circuit of the azure sky throws forth sad throbs and grievous suspires, prejudicating Locrine's overthrow. The fire casteth forth sharp darts of flames. The great foundation of the triple world trembleth and quaketh with a mighty noise, presaging bloody massacres at hand. The wandering birds that flutter in the dark when hellish night in cloudy chariot seated casteth her mists on shady Tellus face with sable mantles covering all the earth now flies abroad amid the cheerful day, foretelling some unwanted misery. The snarling curs of darkened Tartarus, sent from Avernus ponds by Radamanth, with howling ditties pester every word, the watery ladies and the lightfoot fawns, and all the rabble of the woody nymphs, all trembling hide themselves in shady groves and shroud themselves in hideous hollow pits. The boisterous Boreas thundereth forth revenge. The stony rocks cry out on sharp revenge. The thorny bush pronounceth dire revenge. Now Corinius, stay and see revenge and feed thy soul with Locrine's overthrow. Behold, they come, the trumpets call them forth, the roaring drums summon the soldiers, lo, where their army glistereth on the plains. Throw forth thy lightning, mighty Jupiter, and pour thy plagues on cursed Locrine's head. So this is a very long way of saying it was a dark and stormy night. Basically, uh, Corinius, the ghost of Corinius comes out and there's lightning and there's thunder and he's just describing kind of how dark the world has become right now because everything is going to be bad for Locrine. But he's like, you know, these the birds that normally are only out in the nighttime, like the ravens and the crows and stuff like that, they're flying in the middle of the day because everything is awful and everything's gotten cloudy and it, this is foreboding some misery that's about to befall on Locrine. And, and all the, the woodland creatures are hiding and, and shrouding themselves in pits and hiding under rocks and things like that because the entire earth is crying out for the for revenge. And I know we've talked a couple of times about, you know, there was Gwendolyn's monologue yesterday and there was Humber's monologue when he was hungry. This series of ending several lines with the same phrase. Uh, the Ghost of Corinius has four lines here that end with the word revenge. Um, the the Boisterous Boreas thundereth forth revenge. The rocks cry on sharp revenge. Thorny bush pronounces dire revenge. And then an alarm sounds, like you can hear the trumpets in the distance, and he says, now Corinius stay and see revenge. So he's, it's like he's, he's building himself up, he's getting ready for it, he's getting really excited, and now it's gonna happen. He's like, it's here, it's gonna happen. I get to watch Locrine die. This is the greatest thing ever. The gods are totally gonna punish him. 
So that's the ghost of Crinius, all excited that Locrine's gonna die in this whole thing. And after he says this, there's more alarms, more trumpets, and then we get Locrine and his crew entering from over here, and we get Gwendolyn and her crew and Thrasymachus entering from over here. So we've got like the opposite sides on the opposite sides of the stage. And that's a good place to stop today because we're gonna get into more monologues that kick that off for tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Mwah.